a great leader of God. His name is Stovall Williams, and he is our good friend, Paul Wilbur's pastor. Along, Stovall, along with his wife, Carrie, they founded Celebration Church in Jacksonville, Florida, in 1998. Since its inception, Celebration has grown to include local, regional, and international campuses. Stovall is also the author of several books, including Awakening, A New Approach to Faith, Fasting and Spiritual Freedom, and The God First Life, Uncomplicate Your Life, God's Way. As a pastor, writer, teacher, and conference speaker, his ministry focuses on building the kingdom by reaching and equipping people through the local church to be passionate, whole believers that are mobilized to bring the kingdom of God to their homes and regions. Pastor Stovall and Carrie have been married for over 20 years and are blessed with three children, Kaylin Stovey and Annabelle. Would you stand on your feet and welcome a great man of God, Stovall Williams. Uh, in his people so that we can continue to, to become the, the, the 
the church and the bride that he's looking for. So, because I have a microphone, um, how many how many of you saw the broadcast that Pastor Stowell and I did with Sidro? Just a few of you. Okay. That was that was a good predecessor to our time today. Um, I, I believe where we're going to dig around is in this continuing unfolding of a revelation of the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. This is something that me and my family have been pursuing from city to city as a, as a family unit looking for a place, looking for a city whose builder is the Lord. And that's not a slam on anywhere we've been in the past. It's just that there, come on, you understand that for everything in the heart of God, there's a place and a time. There's a purpose. He, does, he doesn't do things kind of um, ad hoc. He does things on purpose, on time, and with those that he has foreknown, forechosen. So, just before we dig a little bit further, since you don't understand where this came from, let me just tell you this really quickly. A year and a half ago at Passover, the first night of Passover, it was a total setup, total setup, which is what the Lord is trying to do to, to bring the church in Israel together as that one new man, Jew Gentile, right? Ephesians chapter two, the expression of the kingdom and, but it's been tough because we've been in our own kingdoms, we've had our own theologies, our own doctrines, our own ways of thinking, and, and never the two shall meet, even though this is where it started 2,000 years ago. And so, on the first night of Passover, it also happened to be Good Friday. So, Pastor Stovall is, is praying and thinking, how do we, how do, we do this? And, um, and I happen to be there at the church for probably, I think, five years with my family. And the call came, Paul, would you preach Good Friday? I was already scheduled somewhere else of that whole weekend. And, and I said to the Lord, what, what's going on here? And I looked at the calendar and I saw Good Friday was also the first night of Passover. And I said, aha, uh -huh. you have something up your sleeve. And so I called these other places. I said, please, uh, excuse me. I, I believe I'm supposed to be here in Jacksonville. They did. I came, gave a, uh, a message on covenant, how Jesus fulfills and, and demonstrates the new covenant uh, at the Passover Seder. And then he leaves from there and he offers his body and his blood to activate the covenant. That was the purpose of that message. And we were going to close that service with taking communion together to demonstrate and to activate the blood and body of Jesus, Yeshua, our Messiah King, as a demonstration that we are faithful to you. I called Pastor Snowball up to the platform to help me with that part. I took the Afikoman, the cup, spoke the Hebrew blessing over the Afikoman, that's, anyway, I want to get to the meat of this. And handed him a piece, or he took the piece, I'm not sure which. At which point, I asked him, would you now serve the body of the Lord to the congregation? And he basically left the plan. He was standing next to me, four feet away, having a, a, a dynamic and life-changing experience with the living Jesus who then served him the Passover his body and blood he saw many things got a huge download that night and it's still unfolding in those 10, 15, 20 minutes however long it was he left me on the platform to continue the service and I'm saying, Pastor Stonewall, would you like to hand And he's staring, he's transfixed on this piece of matzah, not responding. 
At which point, I see security and ushers. Now, this is a big church. We have 12,000 people in this mothership back in Jacksonville. There's 20,000 worldwide. But they're coming to the platform wondering what's going on. Is he having a stroke? Is he in trouble? He's not responding. I, so I said, okay, well, I sent the ushers out to distribute the, the bread, the matzah. I took the cup, I tried again, spoke the Hebrew blessing, offered it to Pastor Snowball. Nothing. I had no idea what was going on. But what you're going to hear in the next few minutes is another piece of this unfolding revelation. I'll, I'll finish with this, I promise. In Psalm 25, it says this. Who then is the man that fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. Uh, he will spend his days in prosperity and his descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. And during that, those minutes, the pastor Stonewall spent with Jesus. Actually, it was Yeshua because it was the first night of Passover. Jesus came back on Easter, but Yeshua showed up on the first day of Passover. That's a joke. Same, same thing. But from those moments, we have been transformed as a church, as a congregation, as a people. This covenantal revelation of the work that the Holy Spirit wants to do in us and through us is not only transforming us, our homes, our church, but our city. It's an amazing thing. So, with that, Pastor Stone. So, thank you. Thank you. So, um, you know, what, what you're going to hear today, this is obviously, you know, with a year and a half of, of um, prophetic counsel, a lot of scholarship, a lot of scriptures, you know, thank God that, that Paul and the Wilbur family was, was in our church because before that Passover, you know, I've, I've always been, you know, pro-Israel, but, I, I, you know, I just, what would you say, I just, I just wasn't into that, just like I wasn't into a lot of things, you know. Uh, you know, I, I did what, what I best I knew. I, I look back now, and it's, it's easy to be like, wow, we're doing everything so wrong. And the Lord reminded me, because... We had a great first 20 years of our church, and, and the Lord said, it, it, it impressed upon me, it's, it's, it's incomplete. It, it, it wasn't that what we were doing was wrong in a sense, because what we were doing was what I know, what I knew to do, and what I had been shown to do. And so, I want to make sure and honor the Lord for the first 20 years of our church, when He still did amazing things. And, uh, and, and, but in my ignorance, there was just a lot I didn't think that, that, that mattered, um, you know. And so, so in this, in this encounter, and how it was very, I like to say, heavenly Hebraic, it was the, the it started with the Hebrew voice, and, and then when the encounter happened, uh, you know, Jesus was on the stage here, and then we were there, and uh, it was very, what I say, he heavenly Hebraic. And so what, what I'd like to do now is, there were so many things in that experience that, you know, I would need a few hours, like four or five hours. If, if Paul's going to be here with me, I need eight hours. But, <laughs> but, but so, so I want to let you know that this is... The, I have language now that I just <laughs> covenant, you know, I just didn't, it was overwhelming. It's like trauma, but like positive trauma, like awesome. Yes. So uh, what I want to do, and so what I want to talk about is I want to talk about um, what 
it's really about love. And, uh, and you know, when I was in that encounter, it's hard to describe the love of God um, in human words. But what I can tell you is this, the, the, in that encounter, I'd always related to Jesus as, you know, master, king, savior, I'm a servant. And, and that is true. He is all of those things. But in the encounter, for the first time ever, Jesus was like a big brother. And uh, in the way that he treats you, he treats you with equality. Now, I understand. <laughs> I'm not able, none of us are equal to King Jesus. Amen? But he treats you that way. And that dignity, that, that equality makes you want to lay your life down for him and his family all the more. And what also what was in that encounter was, was so while there's this love and, you know, there's, there's terror, not how you think bad, it's just, it's just, they're opposite uh, tensions, total love, total fear, but all pure and holy and good. And so one of the things was this thing I'm, you, it's, he's treating you as an equal, but my place is everyone's place. So, so you know, our congregation was blended in the heavenly congregation, and there's a, but it's the oneness. Like, like you never feel it's everyone is one, everyone is equal. Everybody's place is so valuable to Jesus. Everybody's place, like. Like, so that night, my place was in this certain um, position, but everyone, you know, I'm thinking, you know, we're, we're seated or we're positioned in heavenly places with Messiah Jesus. And, and, and so there's that, I'm one, there's this love, I'm, I'm, you know, there's, there's this oneness, but in this encounter on Passover, there's, there's Jesus and then there's the heavenly table, and, and, you know, where we believe, because after we went to Israel and I, I actually went to Mount Zion, which I didn't even know there really was a Mount Zion. Isn't that embarrassing? I'm sorry, I was a Gentile of Gentiles. You want to, you want to, I just thought it was like, you know, some kind of spiritual metaphor. When we, we said, we're going to Mount Zion, I was like, oh, really? I thought it was like the governmental name or, you know, David's kind of seat of worship. I didn't know it was actually, no, it's the mountain kind of on the way up right before so. But, so, so even though, so there's, there's the, the apostles and the table and Jesus. So even though there's total oneness, I'm just as one, I'm, I'm just a, a I'm one, I'm, there's equality. With, with everyone, but I'm distinct. There I am, there is distinction. And that's when we finally have to process in this with scholars and, and different things. Like, it, I was grafted. That I was the same, I was one, but I was different. But there was nothing about that different that made me any less or, 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 or made me feel not a part. Does that make sense? It was the opposite. There was distinction, but I was total, totally one. And so kind of off that part of that revelation, I'm going to talk about um, some of these things that I think at the core is the key to the restoration of all things. And uh, can I just say that some of these things that you just said the acceptance, the oneness. You, you've spoken in the past about experiencing the, the impact and the weight of his personality, the, the expression of his love, where you know that not only are you forgiven, but 
you are so embraced, has so ministered to me as a person. Because I, I think for us, in our human experience, we see the words, we say, I believe this by faith, but to know that you can experience this kind of total love, even when the course of, in this dimension, as the enemy continues to remind you of how far short we fall every day, be, be thou holy as I am holy. All right, I give up right there. Uh, I can throw me out because there's no way I'm going to make that. And, and yet, Hebrews 2, verse 11 says, He who redeems men, which is issue with Jesus, right? And those who are redeemed, he's not ashamed to call his family. And it's lines like this, that hearing of your experience, gives me the hope that it's true. Can I, can I say to you, it gives me real hope that it's really true. That as far short as I fall, this experience, and what we're now experiencing as a result of it, I, I can believe it because, because of, uh, uh, because, because this Gentile, and I told Jesus, listen, I'm not offended that I stood four feet away and you totally ignored me. <laughs> totally ignored me. Didn't even say, Paul, I'm going to speak to Stovall right now. You go ahead and win nothing. I had no idea what was going on. Zero. I'm not offended. <laughs> but what Pastor Stovall experienced and then has been able to not, not only, um, it's the right word, to, to demonstrate to us has, has brought such hope to us that these these words are alive, they're true, and we can, are, and will experience them for ourselves face face to face. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to just go through these few things and I want to encourage everyone that I think that where where we're going as God's people is I think everyone is going to begin to have more encounters, more visions. Yeah. You know, the Lord, He didn't do that for me. He did that for us. And He's no respecter of persons. And, and, you know, even when you look in the Bible and we read about all these men and women of, of God, it's so important to know they were just like us. They're, they're just